So we are going to enter into what is known as the media makeover uh, with Ray. He's going to take us through this. This is a, in essence the, the, my very first experience when I first uh, started to work with Ray. And I, I was hooked from, from this moment on because even the small changes he told me to make made a significant difference. But first, we're going to show you a quick Zoom tutorial that I think it's very important that you guys have an understanding of how this is going to work. So let me go ahead and show you that. So that, that's what it looks like when you, when you get this whole Zoom thing wrong. But we're going to do it a whole, whole different way, folks, because we have a master uh, joining us. So first of all, uh, let, let us all bring on Ray DeGray. Ray, are you there, buddy? I am here and I'm ready to roll. Cool. Well, let's do this. You may want to just inc increase your sound a little bit. Um, or, uh, you just, check, or check, check, bit check, check, you... check, check, check. You're good. All right. Okay, folks. Um, so by now, I think you, you have a very good idea that you, <laughs> you could look really silly on a Zoom call. And although that was a very entertaining SNL uh, skit, it's not all that far from the truth, is it? I mean, we've all been there. We've seen how horrendous some of these calls, uh, well, some of these Zoom experiences can be for us. So we're going to end that today. You all in agreement? Would you like to, from this point on, stop looking like an amateur and start looking like a pro? So to do this, now you're going to have the option of toggling the view that you prefer. And by now you probably know right on the top right hand corner of your screen, you can select gallery view or active speaker. What I would encourage you to do is stay for the moment in gallery view. Now this is going to look like really, really busy, kind of, kind of, kind of ugly because of the amount of distractions that are available. So please try to still focus on me because I, I really do want you to hear what I'm saying as I go through this. I know you, you've got the urge if you're looking in gallery view right now to start looking at all those lovely faces on the screen. You also have the ability to toggle over to the next screen. So just, you'll see the arrow on the right hand and left hand side. Go ahead and do that now and just toggle back and forth and notice all the people that are currently uh, on camera. Now, for anybody who's not on camera right now, could we cheer everyone on to say, turn your cameras on? We want to see you, okay? So, so those of you that are hiding behind that lovely picture of yours, we want to see your lovely face, all right? So I'll just give you everybody a moment, turn your cameras on. And what we're going to experience here, folks, is what we call a media makeover. And specifically, it's an on-camera media makeover. Now, we like to make big claims. Well, I know when I first met Bijel and I started to tell him about this media makeover, I found that when I was explaining it, to him that I, I actually felt like he's gonna tell me I'm full of crap because this sounds this sounds very hypey. Because what I was saying to him is, Bijel, we have this process of working with clients through Zoom, through this media makeover process. And literally in less than an hour, I can have people looking like complete amateurs to looking almost even pro level. Now I'm not going to make that guarantee for everyone because we sometimes need to have a little more resources available to us to make that happen. But I, I do say that every single time you will see a transformation right before your eyes of somebody that went from looking like an amateur to the end of the process looking like a pro. So that's our challenge today. That's what I'm going to ask all of you to participate with me in doing. Now, normally we don't, we do this in a more controlled fashion with less numbers, but it really doesn't matter. If you're willing to play along with us, we could actually make it happen even with the large number of people that we have here today. The, the only thing I'm going to be limited by is my ability to check in with so many, so many 
other people personally and kind of give you tips. So the way I'm going to do it as a group, and oh, by the way, um, I may check in personally, so don't let your guard down. I may call you up and offer some tips. But for the most part, what I'd like to do is be fairly general in the advice. But you've already gotten a number of great tips from Bijel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to also give you some information. I'm just going to put a link into chat and that's going to give you access to a document which is our media makeover checklist. Let me do, th do that now. And this is something that you want to take away and use from this point on to practice and as a reminder that there are a, there's a right way and a wrong way to do things. Okay, so I've added the media makeover checklist in chat so you can go ahead and access that. Please do not read it now. I'm gonna cover a lot of those tips here. Now, this document is built upon an acronym we use called BLAST. Now, BLAST stands for, and I'll just give you the highlights, but BLAST stands for B is actually be just be yourself it's also believe in yourself it's also be real so these are just some 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 tips so b is all about just being true to who you are it's your persona it's your personality if you can take that away from this workshop that is priceless because most people that go into interview mode go into their head immediately and they, are neat, and they need to be in their heart. So the B part of what we're gonna do here today even, if, if there's any engagement between myself and anybody here, if I start to talk to you, please don't freeze up, clam up, and become all funky weird on us, because, <laughs> and, and believe me, that's normal if you're not experienced, if you, if you have not had the practice doing interviews, that is absolutely normal. We're not here to make anybody intentionally look bad, we're making you come out of your comfort zone. That's it. This is all about practice. Like Bijel often says, if you just want the, the tips and the tricks, go, go watch a course on it. I mean, there's lots of media courses out there. But if you want to get real world and you want real results, this is what we're going to do. So the first tip is you got to be yourself. Be true to yourself. Don't try to be somebody else unless that's your role. An actor is going to assume the role of another personality. Sometimes as an expert, you might have an on-camera persona that you want to maintain. We know people in the expert industry personally that how they come across on, can uh, on camera, they're, they're a different person. Now, that's sometimes part of their branding. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about what would it look like if you were in a coffee shop with your pal? Yeah, family member, friend, you're in a coffee shop. And the reason I say coffee shop versus at home or in some kind of other relaxed setting by the pool or whatever is because typically in coffee shops, there's a little bit of background noise and we often escalate our volume as we're speaking. That's the way you want to be on camera. How, whatever level you operate on, add 10 or 20% to that. Just be a little more exciting or excited about what you're talking about than what you would normally do if you were just kind of like sitting across from somebody in a very relaxed environment. So give yourself a little bit of an edge. So that's the be, be yourself, but be yourself a little bit pumped up. Again, you're in a coffee shop, you're talking with a really cool person. And listen, I'm gonna tell you, you didn't come in scripted. Like let's, I mean, folks, you're chatting with your pals. If your pal asks you, hey, what'd you do on the weekend? You're not going to go, well, let me check my script. Let me just get this messaging just right. No, what you're going to do is you're just going to start talking. And it's going to be extemporaneous. You don't even have bullet points for the most part. But really, that's how we speak. We, we talk. We think in bullet points. We don't think in scripts. So if you can just think in bullet points and then put the words to it in the essence of the message, you're going to be fine. So if you get that alone from this, that's gonna be a huge, huge improvement. And remember, be yourself. Okay, the next is L, 
And L is look like a pro on camera. That's it. Look like a pro. So it's everything about visual, visual, visual. And that's what we're going to really focus on now. Uh, but let me go through the rest of the acronym so you can fully understand all of the details that are involved and what all of all the possible areas of improvement that we could that we could take away from this and practice, practice, and more practice. Oh, so so the next is the A is act. Act is your things like your gestures, your body language, your movement, your eye contact. So it's how you behave on camera. Okay, so we're going to see a little bit from the visual aspect here uh, as you're watching, especially if we start having a conversation with someone, we'll see a little bit of how they act, we'll see their gesturing, we'll see their, their body language, we'll see their head nods, their head tilts, all that, their, their eye contact, all that will be visible to everyone. Okay, and then we're going to, uh, to look at the next is S is sound. Now sound, we're not gonna cover today, obviously, Michelle's already talked about the importance of having a good microphone, but let me just emphasize this. You can screw up your video as long as you don't screw up your audio and still have an amazing show, okay? Because you can use B-roll, it's called. You can use graphic overlays to fix a video that was messed up. As long as you have a good audio feed, you'll still have a great interview. And we're talking, of course, if you wanted to capture it on, on video. If you're just wanting an audio podcast, then still just as important, regardless whether you're on video or audio. I mean, uh, whether you're a video or an audio podcast, it has to be great audio. So please do not skimp on this area of getting great quality sound. And it's much more than just your microphones that you're using. It's, are your kids screaming in the background behind you? Are there planes flying overhead? Is your air conditioner coming on and off? Is there anything interrupting the brilliance of what you're presenting to your audience? Because you do not want to distract this. And when you blow audio, you pretty much blew the interview because we can often cannot fix a lot of audio glitches. Which brings us back to how do you get great audio aside from a microphone? High speed internet connections, ethernet cables, hardwired. That's going to be huge to help you get great audio. Okay, and the last part, again, be gel covered in detail and it's also included on the media makeover checklist is tech. Everything tech. Tech, and it's, some of you are techno geeks, I get it. Uh, I'm kind of there myself a little bit. We want to talk about the coolest microphones and all that, and which camera. So you want to know which camera to use? The camera that you will use. <laughs> That's the one. Uh, yeah, you can always get a, uh, you can get a better camera, always. But what I'm, what I'm wanting you to do here is stop making excuses and saying, oh, uh, 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 I'm not going to do the interview yet because I'm waiting for my, for my camera from Amazon. Uh, I got it on order, and I'm waiting for the, and I got my lighting units, and I, uh, and I need a better microphone because, but I'm waiting for my high speed. Stop it. Use the thing that you have, and sometimes it's just your phone. Do you know an iPhone will do, they shoot documentary films on iPhones. So holy cow, stop making excuses and just go out and do interviews. That's what we're, we're encouraging to do. And hey, I'm gonna to be tough love for you folks if you work with us. I'm gonna be friendly, but I'm gonna be tough. I'm gonna to get you doing what you need to do and it's going to be uncomfortable. So let's go back now and um, let, let, me, let me say that, oh yeah, this all sounds like a big talk. Like we, yeah, we're big talkers, but uh, you know, talk is cheap. Why don't we just show you because I can tell you about the transformation that's going to occur, or I can just show you. So how many of you would like, uh, like me to show you the transformation? Oh, go ahead and type it right into chat. Like, I want to know. I want some cheering going on here, folks. Like, if you want me to show you how to look great, you tell me how much you want this. I want to know how badly you want this. And the more you cheer me, the better I'm going to be on camera. I'm going to just give you more. That's it. Let's get this thing rocking. Show me. Okay. Show me. I'm going to be louder. <laughs> <I'm showing. laughs> okay. So remember, folks, 
remember to toggle over to your screen so that you're not just staring at the same few faces. There is a whole, if you've been looking at one screen right now, there is a whole nother group of people on the other screen. And I've been just bouncing back and forth and seeing the big smiley faces. Uh, and uh, uh, you're, you guys are pumping me up. You're, 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 and I see a lot of, actually a lot of our clients here. That is so cool that you actually, you, you guys keep coming back. <laughs> that's that's pretty awesome okay let's start this transformation and the best way to do this if I'm going to call anybody specifically uh, to address in front of the entire group so if I'm gonna point you out what I'd like to, you to do so that everybody can see you is just take a moment and just go like go like this and wave and get everybody's attention so that so that they know let's all practice that now okay so that's how you're going to get. That's how you're going to get attention when I call your name to call, so that everybody starts looking at you. Oh, that's making you nervous already. They're all going to be looking at you, folks. Get used to it. That's what happens when you go Facebook Live. People are looking at you and they're hearing you. And yes, you're going to screw up. So what? Next interview. Move on. Get over it. They'll forget about it. Okay. One sec. So the other thing I'm going to ask you to do then is if I if I I call your name that you're going to unmute yourself. So we're going to have a, a short conversation. That's going to be in a moment. Stay muted now. And if I call your name, unmute yourself, and we'll have some kind of a conversation. You don't know what it is. That's the cool thing about you. You have to be an extemporaneous interview guest. You have to be ready to talk about anything that the interview host asks you even though you submitted your questions the ha ha tricks on you <laughs> we often don't ask we often don't use the questions that that guests submit why because we want to make a better show <laughs> that's that's what we do we want to ask what we think what we want to know and that what our audience wants to know so remember you got to keep in mind what your audience wants and here's another thing folks it's not about you get over yourself this isn't about you. <laughs> Everybody's thinking about what do I look like? What do you, how do I sound? It's not about you. It's about them. It's about your audience. So please just stop thinking about yourself and start thinking about the needs of your audience and your host. Always think about the needs of your host. And then if you do that and you do it right and you have the right messaging, your needs will be met. So it's a win, win, win. All the way around okay so what I'm gonna do start and we're gonna really focus on the visual component here um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check everybody's framing so I want I want you to all look at me and I want you to see where my eyes are positioned on the screen that's called the upper third level oh wait before we do that don't adjust anything Please, somebody take a screenshot of both of the frames. Somebody, I don't care who it is. Capture this. And I want you to capture from this point on at about every, let's say, five, 10 minute intervals, do another screenshot of this, what we're seeing. Because later it's really fun because you actually see the before and after. So, and we see the actual visual of it. So, as long as we got a screenshot of, of both uh, frames right now, both screens. We're good to go. Okay, now let's start making the transformation. So some of you, a lot of you, I'm not going to point you out right now, but uh, if you go, just go to your LinkedIn account or Facebook and start scrolling, let the feed roll and watch some of the biggest influencers on the planet look terrible on camera. Amazing. Some of the, oh, some of the world-class talk show hosts, world-famous talk show hosts that are now confined to their home doing zoom calls have no idea how to make themselves look like a pro on camera it tells me they have peeps to do it so here's what we're going to do if you find yourself somewhere down here on the screen your head is in the middle it's in the wrong spot excuse me folks but that just looks weird i don't care who you are if your head's in the middle of the screen it looks weird if it's also in the middle and it's up really close and that looks weird too so what we're going to do is we're going to create a what we, we we would call a comfortable distance 
And you know that from from just being uh, in the presence of somebody in public, you know there's a there's a comfort level as to how close, especially now, right? It's like a lot <laughs> more distanced. But there is a there is a there is a depth which is weird both ways. So if I'm too far back, uh, it's not it's not great or it's not a great experience. If my head is way up too close, a lot of you guys folks are doing this. A good rule of thumb here is it doesn't matter it doesn't matter the size of your frame some some uh, some cameras capture a wider view the rule of thirds is to look where your eyes are and imagine that there are two vertical lines and two horizontal lines it's like x and o's right on your screen the upper line is the upper third line that's where your eyes should be so everybody adjust your either your seat up or down or tilt your camera so that everybody's eyes are at the upper third. And I want everybody to check check each other. And if you see somebody that's not playing, post in chat. Say, say uh, uh, Patricia or uh, Patricia. Uh, I'm not saying I'm not Patricia. If your head was if your head was a little higher up on the screen. Okay, so everybody look at themselves on the camera and get those eyes up to the upper third. If we still see your head in the middle, we're going to be nudging you in chat. All right, everybody. Okay, so we're already seeing an improvement. Tilt your cameras or adjust the height of your screen. Okay, that's a major improvement right there. That is, that is what so many people do wrong is they don't position themselves correctly. Okay, the other thing I'd like to uh, point out, which is so important, is please do not look down into your laptop. Because what you're doing is you're looking at the screen and often your laptop is way down low. So here's a tip. Position your camera at eye level or slightly above. Now, if you have a laptop, hey, it doesn't take a physics genius to figure this out. Put some books under your laptop. Stack it up. Bring it up to get your camera to eye level. And folks, you're gonna love this. Not only does this allow you to connect with your audience because you're looking right into your camera, which is what you need to be doing. Look into the camera, glance down to your screen. Look into the camera, glance down to the screen. You still want the connection with the person you're talking to, but for the most part, look into the camera because if, you're, if I'm looking into the camera, then you're getting a connection with me. The moment I look down to the screen, you're losing the connection. That becomes more prominent when I'm up close. So if I'm back further, that's not going to be as big of an issue. Now notice I have a wider camera, a wider field of view. It doesn't matter which camera you're using. Just know that some cameras will give you a wider field of view. Now, I just want to show you, because we're going to talk about framing. Bijel mentioned that. It's so important. Notice that when I have a wider field of view, I actually can show my gesturing more. So I can work my gesturing in to my presentation or my interview naturally. Bijel right now probably wants to keep, because of the way he's framed, which is completely perfectly, but he probably wants to keep his gesturing below the level of his frame. Because what you might have is, if you don't get full gesturing, and you're only getting partial gesturing, you notice if you're looking at my screen, you could just get little bits of my thumbs coming up and so on, and it could be a little bit distracting as you're talking. So either you're, full, so either you're, you're fully in, not gesturing, which is okay, or, fully out gesturing wild, widely. Okay, here's another thing about wider frame. Do you know that I don't have to be in the middle of the screen? I could actually be off to the side. And the great thing about being off to the side is I can now use a backdrop to create a product demo. I can actually demo something physical that I want to show my audience, but I also, could actually use this if you have a pure white, well, any solid color that's appropriate, black or white, you can actually put graphics in post and you can edit it graphics and you can actually have a presentation going on 
after you record this. Okay, so on the subject of backdrops, because I got everybody's, I think, let me just check, check across. So I'm gonna check the other screen, make sure everybody's positioning is, Okay, folks, there's still, uh, there's still a couple people that need to come up a little bit higher. So point them out in chat and just give them a, a very friendly nudge. Say, ask them to bring their head up a little bit higher. And then once I'm good with that, okay, good, 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 good. Let's move on to another really killer tip. Here, backdrops. When Bijel started with us, oh my word. He had stuff, he had funky stuff going on behind him. Listen, folks, if you got your kitchen behind you, the dog's running, the family's doing stuff, uh, it's best. Here's the thing. Either cover it up with some kind of a, a curtain and not, not some cheap thing. Just don't go ha like start taking a sheet and hang <laughs> with a bunch of wrinkles on it. Like just spend a few bucks and just get a nice, a nice curtain that uh, you can put behind you. What The reason I love backdrops, any kind of curtain backdrop, is because I can control what's behind me now. And if you're in your home or your office, you cannot. Uh, sometimes people are just gonna do things around you. So I do encourage you, to, if, you if you're gonna use a, a backdrop, that, that's a real bonus, that's a real benefit for doing it. If you choose to not use a backdrop, it's totally okay, but here, let me qualify it. Have the things behind you appropriate to your brand and your message. Now, again, this is sometimes, folks, if you have too much stuff behind you, it's very distracting for the audience to see. Now, I know I'm not gonna point anybody out here, but there are clearly, there are clearly backdrops here that need to be organized or covered up, okay? Or completely restructured. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do, folks. I want you to just take a look right now. If you're looking at yourself and you see like maybe a whole bunch of different kind of items, like sometimes people have bookshelves and different books and you can actually read the titles of the books or they have these plaques, if those things are not relevant to your message when you go on video, then get rid of them. So we call that staging. Uh, there are people that, let me just see if we have an example. I can just show you an example of someone. Oh, oh my word, we have William Medeve. Okay, uh, William, go give a wave, William. Give a, give a wave. World-class photographer. Hi, guys. And we're gonna learn more about w William later. Uh, but um, look, okay, William, world-class uh, photographer, artist, uh, world traveler. Look at his backdrop. It looks like Africa with some gira giraffes. Would you say, if you know William, you know that's William. Okay, so the, we, have no, we have no distraction from William's message right now. Okay, also, uh, Kathy Burns, I'm looking at you right now. Will we give a wave, Kathy? Give a wave, keep waving. Everybody look look for Kathy Burns waving. And look at her staging. Look at her backdrop. She has her book. She has a nice plant. She has a very clean wall, a soft color. She, her colors are popping. Great contrast. She's looking like a pro. Okay. I want you, I want you right now. And again, this is going to take some real fast work, folks, and it's going to be really, really, uh, uh, it's going to look like confusion corner in a moment. I want you to take a look at Kathy as a role model for a display that you could quickly set up with some props, even if it's a clean wall, even if it's just a, a white wall, a clean wall, you can throw, adjust your camera and just shoot in a different place. Or... Uh, William right now, if you have something that serves as a backdrop, again, a wall, a painting or something, and I want you to work, I'm only going to give you three minutes to do this. The goal here is to make your visual backdrop more appealing, all right? And, and you might have to run around the house. You may have to call family members right now and say, hey, yeah, go get me, go get me a sheet or get that trifold uh, uh, 
a bo uh, whatever you call those things, uh, display, go get a, a flag or hold up something behind me temporarily while I do this, this activity. But right now we're trying to clean up the distracting noise from behind you. Here's another key tip, folks. If there is bright light behind you, close the curtains. That's called backlighting. That's a no-no. You, you should not have windows behind you because it washes out your color. Your face will darken. So always avoid having lights, any kind of bright lights. On lighting, we're going to do this at the same time. Get a lamp. I don't care what kind of lamp. Get a, get a desk lamp, preferably a, like a daylight fluorescent bulb. If you already got the right lighting, use that. But what you need to do is you need to go plug that lamp in and put it in front of you and shine it right on your face. All right? So that's part of it. Backdrop and lighting. So close the windows, close, get rid of that backlight and put a light on your face. And we're going to uh, watch everybody scramble for- Dr. Ray? Yes? Um, so there's a few questions I just want you to quickly address. A lot of people want to know about green screens and the solid color back uh, wall. Cool. Yes, absolutely. So, solid color wall, yes. Green screens, usually no. Because green screens incorrectly lit will give you an amateur look. They, I would qualify that. We have a client we work with who's in the travel agency. He's in, he's in a cruise. He's a cruise specialist. And uh, that's awesome for, because he's got a really great sense of humor. And he can use a green screen to just put funny, he can do funny video skits where he's got, he's changing out different uh, locations. But for the most part, professional, I would say keep it clean. You could put a, a certificate or a plaque or a book or something, but don't put too much in because the more, you, more stuff you put behind you, the more distracting. You notice, watch this, watch this. I'm going to just play with some lighting for a moment. I'm going to take my scarf off and I practically almost disappear because of the contrast between my clothing and the backdrop. So I actually have, to, I can adjust my lighting to give myself a different view. But the reason I put a little splash of red, it's a simple thing. Number one is I like to wear solid colors, especially blues, very, very cam camera friendly. Avoid stripes, checkers, and polka dots usually. Stripes, checkered, polka dots. Avoid that. Very distracting. Okay, so solid colors are good. Tend to, like, if it's a bright red, it's risky, although it, it works a lot. You know, it's more old school. The old school cameras didn't like bright red. They didn't like white. So just use a whites and reds, kind of like splashy type colors. Uh, but what I'm doing with this, with this scarf is I'm bringing attention to my face. That's all I'm doing is I'm drawing. I've eliminated all the distractions and I'm bringing attention to my face so that you're focused on me when I'm talking. So as I'm, as I'm talking here, okay, uh, what was the other question, Maria? Green screen and, oh, I think I answered it. Solid walls, yes. Just make sure your clothing is good contrast with the wall. And if those of you want to see what a blank, like a white wall, Yogi Parmer, which is, uh, she's married to Bijel, so <laughs> she's got a, bl a white background, which is very clear, as you can see. Okay, keep going, folks. If you're, uh, oh, geez, I'm seeing, oh, I'm seeing some, some great improvements already. Take a look, folks. Oh, screen capture this, screen capture this, both, uh, yeah, we want to... Uh, Let's get you in place, Bonnie. We want you on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get everybody. Say cheese. <laughs> All right, good. So give me a wave if someone, some of you have added light to your face. Give me a wave. Oh, a lot of you. Okay. Give me a wave. Give me a, give me a wave. Give everybody a wave both hands, a both hands wave if your backdrop looks better than it did when we started. Just give me, just give me a wave. Okay, keep going. I want to check the other screen as well. Okay. Good, 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 good. Okay, now some of you, let me say, some of you, of course, are thinking right now, I don't have time, but I get it. I get what I need to do. Yes, do it later. 
<laughs> do it later. Don't show up again to your next interview without making any changes. If you see, if you see the violations, and that's all I'm going to call them right now is violations. If you see the violations, then correct them. Stop coming back again and again with the same backdrops that are not serving your professional brand that you want to create. So again, what we're looking here, folks, is even though there's general rules, the more important thing is, does the visual image support the message? Which is your brand, your brand and your message, does it support? So people often ask us, what should I wear? I don't know, it depends. If you're a captain of a fire department, why don't you wear your uniform? If you're a chef, why don't you wear that? Maybe even a chef's hat. It's that which presents you as an expert for what you do. All right? So uh, there again, there are some general rules about what to wear. But for the most part, it's what do you need to wear and what visuals do you need to place on your frame to look more like a pro. Okay, so I'm seeing some here st that needs, still need improvement, but the improvements are just simply backdrop improvements. I'm seeing, I'm seeing some, that have, um, some that have some lighting issues, but for the most part, it was, it was uh, an improvement of what we started with. But I do see that some, let me take a look at the other screen. Some people are, let's see if I can see any, 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 any. any. Can I say one Good. thing? Yes. Uh, I teach that's, dance. That's Stephanie? And, yeah, hi. Hi, Stephanie. For years and years and years, I've been dancing in my kitchen, just doing Facebook Lives. And I started teaching online and I started doing it in my kitchen, but when the internet was wobbly, I went into the living room closer to the modem and I was in my living room and people said to me like, oh my God, we finally feel like you brought us into your home. Like, you know, um, if that makes sense, you know, or <laughs> they got a more warm, fuzzy feeling. Um, but uh, this where I'm at now is just in my dining room and I don't have anything better at the moment. So, I, I mean, I, uh, you know, so it's like, I will work on that too. Stephanie, every, everybody's going to work on it. That's the great thing. What we're doing here is we're seeing what could we do for, in what could we do visually improvements in a very short time? And I'm seeing it looks okay, Stephanie. Where it I am looks, right now is yeah. where I've done since the uh, pandemic, my weekly webinars with my holistic wellness team. So this is where I've been doing it. So I don't know what it portrays, but I've got family pictures in the back and this thing. <laughs> it's better okay. than the kitchen perhaps. <laughs> So you don't want to get into a, a situation where you're having to explain all the things that you have behind you that are not relevant to your message. So right. really anything. And you got a couple of professional organizers on with us today. So they they could give you all kinds of tips on how to clean up that, that backdrop. Right, Kathy and right, Yogi? You can just tell them that you got to declutter that declutter that thing like move some of those cats out of that house and get get some of those cobwebs out of the backdrop folks clean it up and uh yeah so again the, the message here is what you can take away is so you can say green screen or no green screen you can say backdrop or or like a backdrop meaning a complete cover-up or a background display setup that's what you want to be thinking from that for the most part, for professionals, I say go with a background display, use props, and make it make it really, really visually cool. Okay, so hey big, Ray, yes, hey, Ray. Uh, yes. Casey, Casey here. Can I? Hey, can Casey. I, I have a I have a question for you. Yep. I do a lot of zooms and a lot of interviews, and I see a lot of people that are. Um, let's see. How do I want to say this without um, kind of going after someone? Um, there are a lot of people that are buying quote digital backdrops and it's it, in, I, I'm going to call it, I come from the film world. So what I want to say is that the green screen is just terrible in use. Um, yeah. 
can you talk a little bit about like I know people are using the Zoom background so that they show it in his, in in the beach or they put up a picture or whatever. But I see so many people that don't take into account the lighting and how so they move and it jumps out and yeah. you know you got red and the red coma Can you just talk just a tiny bit about? I mean, I would rather see somebody with a black curtain or a white yeah. wall than a a a half-assed digital screen behind it that cuts in and out it is so unbelievably distracting as an audience person can you just talk just a tiny bit about that yes absolutely casey and i i mentioned that earlier they say very few very few exceptions where i would actually say that somebody should use a green screen very few exceptions almost always never use it unless you're professionally doing it it's like this folks if you've used powerpoint or keynote holy cow you better know how to use it properly because you could really screw it up. You could really mess mess your presentations up with all the, the bells and whistles that are included. That's kind of like a green screen. Like if you just don't get it just right, it's just gonna look, you know, like uh, the, the, the presentation you see it in PowerPoint, as soon as you see it, you go, well, you're an amateur. Whoever created that presentation, you're an amateur. That's like with a green screen. The moment you the moment you improperly light a green screen and you use those zoom backdrops and everything, I immediately say, Well, you're an amateur. That's it. Yep. That's that should not be your first impression of someone. But and if you have a solid backdrop like uh, like Bijel has and like William has, like I, I have here, it's kind of a safe way to go because you can change colors. You can even put you can put design, you can put logos on here. There's a whole bunch. And of course, you can still put digital after over top. You can put digital digital layers over top of your backdrop. But if you're using a, a background, props, professional props, limited. Again, look at Kathy Kathy Burns. That is a that is a beautiful layout. It's very professional. And again, yeah. William as a backdrop. Yes, Casey. Ray, I'm sorry. I didn't mean. I I thought you were done. I didn't mean. No problem. The, no problem. The second delay here. Um, I just want everybody to recognize that when you're saying green screen, that also includes the quote digital backgrounds where somebody upgrades, up throws their logo or whatever. Yes, same. There's, I'm just, uh, this is a personal massive pet peeve of mine is that I understand that people are doing that because they don't like their background or whatever, but from a distraction level, the minute you move too fast and the digitization doesn't keep up and I can tell that you're in your cluttered bathroom. Um, but you think yeah. your logo is supposed to be on it? It is, it is a true mark of amateurization. I don't even know if that's a word. Um, yeah. um, so I just wanted to throw that out there. I'd rather see a white wall or even a bookshelf like this, even if there are some pieces on it that are clean and put together, than a digital background that is cutting in and out. And if you don't think it's cutting in and out, go back and watch yourself and see if it's cutting in and out. It is be it, it's just an it's a mark of an amateur that's my opinion i don't know ray you it's, <laughs> yes don't do it don't do it i agree i agree i agree casey don't yeah don't do that folks so we're showing you how to look like a pro okay so i'm gonna you ready for this folks you ready you ready you ready daphne daphne marina go ahead and wave and unmute yourself Hi there, Ray. How are you? Hi, everyone. Hi, Casey. Hi, Daphne. Welcome to our show. So, Thanks for uh, having me. Daphne, listen, I've heard so much about you, and the work that you're doing is so mind boggling. It's unbelievable how you're changing the world. You're making okay. the world a better place. Can you just tell me how you got started doing what you do? Yes, wow, what a great question. Thank you, Ray, and I'm so excited to be here, first of all, so thanks for having me. Uh, well, let me say this. Uh, life throws you a sh Oh, can't say that word. Life surely throws you a, <laughs> a lot of different, uh, a lot of different opportunities. And, uh, you know, just, um, I'll talk about something that just happened this year. Uh, my beautiful mother transitioned and to into heaven and uh that was a very long arduous uh 
fight against, um, you know, a real ailment that she had and what it taught me, but her life, what her life taught me was that you continue to do the very thing that was your heart song. And so I've been putting it off and putting it off and putting it off as far as getting really out there on the world stage. And I finally, you know, promised her, don't worry, I'm going to do everything that, uh, you know, has been on all of my vision boards and all of my, you know, um, brain, you know, I have, I have so many graphs over there uh, that I look at and I promised that I would do that. But the promise really was to myself so that I could help people really feel just that they belong here, that they're not um, alone. And most of all, to really reach inside and have fun. You just got to have fun. So yeah, let's cut there. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Daphne, uh, thank you. I'm, and first of all, I'm sorry about your loss. All right, uh, thank you. And and you're you're with uh, you you're with a lot of love here from everybody. Okay. So we're what we're going to do right now is we're going to just we're going to do we're going to just do some coffee shop talk. But what I'd want you to do, I want you to first of all, I want you to sit up straight. Sit up straight. Just sit up. And I want you to everybody do this. Just sit up straight. Take your bottom away from the back of your seat. Just pull it away so that you're not relying on the back of your seat. And I want you to lean forward just about five degrees or so. Just lean forward slightly. Great. So now and look right into the camera. Great. Everybody do it. Just lean forward a little bit. Great. Okay. Now we're going to continue. We're going to continue with the coffee shop talk. Are your hands, uh, where are they? Are they resting on something? Your, your hands? On your hips? They're on my okay. hips. Okay, are you a big gesture? I am. Okay, well, feel free. Again, be yourself. This is coffee shop talk. Now, I'm not, I'm not, uh, you got to just play with me right here. You got to imagine. I am not a host right now. I'm not a host. And you're not a guest. We're just a couple of people who just met in a coffee shop. Okay, here we go. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, would it be okay if I bought you a coffee? So we're in line here. Uh, sure. <laughs> okay. Notice. Okay. Notice, yeah. folks. Notice. Uh, uh, sure. What? So what just happened, Daphne? How did you feel about that? Odd. Uh, that was an uncomfortable question. It was. Yeah, you're not trusting because you don't know me. And I just offered something. It's you know some people would say it was nice, uh, but it was an uncomfortable question. Folks, are you going to be asked uncomfortable questions by hosts? Yes. You need to be ready to answer anything. How do you get that? Practice, 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 and more practice. But not practicing doing the same crap that you've been doing. Practicing doing the right things. The right things. You can't just keep doing interviews, doing the wrong things, repeating the same violations. You have to get the formula right. And then what you do more of is the formula. So let me try this again, Daphne. And first of all, I think you'd understand that if we, if we were friends, if we were buddies, like we knew each other, and I asked you that question, can I buy you a coffee? Like you're going to be totally cool with it, right? You're going to say, of course. So you're going to say, of course, it's your turn to buy anyway. You know, I bought it the last five times, right? Okay, so, so my point is you're often not going to have that really personal warm connection with your host and your guest. And Maria is actually a master of getting rapport in literally like 10, 20 seconds on a red carpet. She's, had, she's done interviews with some of the biggest celebrities in the world and a, a two-minute interview, and people come to her and say, I can't believe you're like buddies with Richard Branson. Or like Tony Bennett, I can't believe you were you were hugging Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Like you guys look like your buddies. That's Maria's knack. She has the ability to put people at ease very quickly, and she also knows how to ask the right questions. She knows how to just really get to the heart of a person. Do you know, folks, when you're interviewing somebody, one of the cool early questions on is just a, a good a good question to get started is is. Hey, what are you up to these days? 
Uh, so if I think about that, what are you up to these days? Or hey, what's juicing you these days? What, you, what do you think people are going to say? And it's a rhetorical question. I'll tell you what they're going to say. They're going to say what they're most passionate about, what's going on in their life. It's something important to them. So the moment you ask that question, and so the moment is, uh, oh, I'm taking care of my six-year-old son. I love that guy. He's amazing. Well, I automatically got my topic. I now know what to, I know, I now know where to steer that interview if you want rapport early on. Okay, so that's a little bit deeper stuff. I'm just giving you a taste of once you're visually, when you, once you got the visuals down and you got great audio, we're now getting into a little bit about what makes your body language natural. First of all, stop thinking about body language. Take these body language courses and they tell you to have all these postures, but the reality is, just be, be, be yourself. If you be yourself, you gesture naturally. You don't have to do this funky thing like, oh, my arms are clasped in front or I should have a, a certain, I should have my hands on my hips or where are my hands? If you're thinking, if, you're, if you have to think about where your hands are, you're thinking about yourself. Mm -hmm. You're not thinking about your audience. When you think about your audience, it just flows. You do the right things naturally. Go ahead and mute yourself, Daphne. Thank you. Give everybody, Daphne, give her a, a big wave. That looks like Bijel's show, right? Bijel, yeah. when he ends his show, we're, we're, we're buzzing. We're buzzing. What does he say? We're buzzing off or time to... Time to buzz off. And Ray, time to buzz you, got, off. you got five minutes before you're going to get buzzed off, by the way. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we're, we're, we're done here. So uh, what I want to do is just do one final check and then leave you with something. Okay, let me check, 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 check. Some of you are still not on camera. I don't know why, but if it's, if it's a good reason, I guess I'll accept it. If it's not a good reason, all right, there's some folks. Oh, I got you folks, you're driving. Okay, so sometimes, yes. So yes, your location is, is going to be a factor. Sometimes you're on the run, that's a point. What happens if you're outside? What if you're doing a, 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 an interview outside while you're walking? Well, here's something. We already talked about lighting. Keep the sun on your face. Remember, the sun. The sun could then, you know, mess up. So we're back to lighting. So you can use the sun as lighting. So let me just check, 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 check. Oh, some of you are looking sweet. Ellen Rich, you're looking like a king or something, man. I'm like, what the heck? It looks like you're in a throne there. <laughs> cool. That's my, uh, I, that, that is with a green screen. Oh, okay. But it is professionally lit so you don't get like the disappearing hands. And so, so you know what you're doing? Yeah. All right, cool. Okay, let me take a look at, good, 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 good. Look at, look at um, uh, Casey. Does he look professional with a bunch of uh, uh, awards and stuff behind him? Uh, look at Maria. You see some certificates on the wall. Uh, appropriate stuff, right? They look professional. All right. Cool, 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 cool. I'm going to see if I can. Bonnie, I love the, the, the contrast of the scarf. That's great. Yes. Cool. Right. Has Bruce Lee joined us on this Zoom? <laughs> that's, really, that's pretty cool. Uh, I see Bruce Lee. Oh, that's just a photo. Okay, it's not the real, it's not actually Bruce Lee. <laughs> okay, folks, I am, oh, please, folks, let's all look into the camera and let's get a screenshot of both frames. Put a big smile. Make sure you're positioned correctly. Right, right. Make sure you're positioned. Hold it. Hold it. And big smile one. All right, let's get a second screen. Let's do a big smile number two. And smile. And let's see if, any, any, if you have anyone on that. No, the third screen is just primarily uh, screenshot. Okay, so we're, we're good, Ray. Thank you so much. Back to you, Bijel. Awesome. So that's just like a microcosm of what you get to experience working with professionals. Uh, imagine now, that level of input week after week, how good you're going to be just after a few, few sessions like that.